Xi Jinping, Putin, and uh, Modi ji. And this is Gitanjali Rajaram who gave a comment. Aage kai, piche kua. That actually <laughs> caught my imagination and I thought, let me put it across to all of you. It exemplifies how difficult uh, we're going to have uh, times we're going to have ahead diplomatically. Not only diplomatically, in, on many cases. Uh, you know, it was one thing to have adversarial relations with China. It is another thing to have neutral relations with China. But it's a third thing to have engagement with China. And that is going to be taxing because earlier we failed it. Our engagement with China, we have been a miserable failure till now. But we're going to do that now. And how does it board? We'll have to see. And we'll tackle that also. Okay. Now, you know, this is some tweet which came out. He says, BRICS platform hoping, helping bring nations like India and China to the table. And this is something which... Uh, uh, President Putin is now going all around and said, look, I brought both, this, both these people to talk. And he's been a bridge. He's spoken well with China. He's spoken well with Russia, India. And he's brought us to the table. Up table ke upar aane ke baad, how, what task you play is your headache. Okay. Uh, I mean, you can't blame Russia for it. So that's the danger. Oh, he I like that. Okay, so next, then what next? Okay, we'll get to this a little later. But let's see what exactly transpired in this meeting between uh, Mr. Modi and uh, Xi Jinping. Uh, it's whatever has been put out in the public domain. Uh, I'll, I'll play it out. And you have a look. And here, the actual thing, uh, it's a... Uh, Small clip I put together. Uh, you can have a look. Our partner, Pradhan Mantri Narendra Modi, and Dono Ke Malakat Ki Tasveer. The voice will come. For both sides to keep to the trend of history and the right direction of our bilateral relations, it's important for both sides to have more communication and cooperation, properly handle our differences and disagreements, and to facilitate each other's pursuit of development aspirations. It's also important for both sides to shoulder our international responsibility set an example for boosting the strength and unity of the developing countries and to contribute to promoting multipolarization and democracy in international relations. Excellency, you will be happy with you. And as you said, after five years, we are having a formal meeting for five years. हमारा मानना है कि भारत और चीन के संबंधों का महत्व केवल हमारे लोगों के लिए ही नहीं लेकिन वैश्विक शांति स्थिरता और प्रगति के लिए भी हमारे संबंध बहुत अहम है एक्सेलेंसी सीमा पार पिछले चार वर्षों में उत्पन्न हुए मुद्दों पर बनी सहमति का हम स्वागत करते हैं सीमा पर शांति और स्थिरता बनाए रखना हमारी प्राथमिकता रहनी चाहिए म्यूचुअल ट्रस्ट म्यूचुअल रिस्पेक्ट और म्यूचुअल सेंसिटिविटी हमारे संबंधों का आधार बने रहना चाहिए इन सभी विषयों पर बात करने का अवसर मिला है मुझे विश्वास है कि हम खुले मन से बातचीत करेंगे और हमारी चर्चा कंस्ट्रक्टिव होगी धन्यवाद 
So as you all know, uh, earlier today, in fact, just a short while ago, uh, Prime Secretary Minister Modi met Xi with President Xi Jinping on the sidelines of the 16th BRICS summit. This was their first um, uh, proper bilateral meeting uh, at delegation level uh, in uh, nearly five years. Uh, the last one being on the sidelines of the BRICS summit in Brasilia uh, in 2019. Uh, so let me just uh, flag uh, some points made by the two leaders uh, during their uh, meeting. Uh, this meeting happened, uh, as you are all aware, close on the heels of the uh, uh, disengagement uh, and patrolling agreement and the resolution of issues uh, that had arisen, uh, had arisen in the uh, India-China border areas in 2020. Uh, naturally, the two leaders uh, welcomed the agreement reached between the two sides uh, through sustained dialogue over the last several weeks uh, in diplomatic as well as military uh, channels. Uh, Prime Minister Modi underscored the importance of not allowing uh, differences uh, on boundary-related matters to disturb peace and tranquility uh, on our borders. And in this context, the two leaders noted that the special representatives on the India-China boundary question have a critical role to play in the resolution of the boundary question and for the maintenance of uh, peace and tranquility in the border areas. Uh, accordingly, they instructed the special representatives to meet at an early date and to continue their efforts uh, in this regard. Uh, you may recall that uh, uh, Special Representative of India, uh, Mr. Ajit Doval, who is also the National Security Advisor, and the Special Representative of the People's Republic of China, uh, Foreign Minister Wang Yi, uh, also a member of the Politburo, have met on the sidelines of uh, international events, but they have not had a round of talks in the Special Representative's format since December 2019. So following today's uh, meeting, we hope to schedule uh, the next round of the SR's talks uh, at an appropriate date. The two leaders also uh, reviewed the state of uh, bilateral relations from a strategic and long-term uh, perspective. Uh, they were of the view that stable uh, bilateral relations between India and China, the two largest nations on Earth, will have a positive impact on regional and global peace and prosperity. And both of them stressed that with maturity and wisdom, uh, and by showing mutual respect for each other's sensitivities, interests, concerns, and aspirations, the two countries can have a peaceful, uh, stable, and beneficial uh, bilateral relationship. Uh, as we have maintained uh, during the last four years, the restoration of peace and tranquility in the border areas will create space for returning us towards the path of normalization of our bilateral relations. Uh, officials will now take the next steps to discuss uh, enhancing uh, strategic communication and stabilizing bilateral relations by utilizing the relevant uh, official uh, bilateral dialogue mechanisms, including uh, at the level of uh, our respective foreign ministers. Uh, the two leaders also briefly reviewed uh, regional and international developments of mutual concern and interest. Uh, they agreed to maintain uh, close communication in this regard. Uh, naturally, uh, they also had a very productive exchange on uh, BRICS and the potential for India and China to enhance cooperation on this particular uh, platform. And uh, in closing, Prime Minister Modi also assured uh, India's full support to China's Right. So this was the entire dialogue. You heard what President Xi Jinping said. You heard what Prime Minister Modi said. And you got a good idea of what, you know, the major points which was touched upon by our foreign secretary. Oh, actually, is there anything more for me to say? There is. Okay. Now, I thought, you know, one very interesting comment has come out, which says, you know, mod, uh, 335 says, 
they only understand strength. Look at what they're doing to their neighbors in the South China Sea. I think this is a very important comment which I need to analyze. Why has China come to talk also? Why has China taken a step back? Strength. As India goes strong, China will have to accommodate. And I've always been saying, India is rising, China is declining. I, on that, I've never had a doubt. So it had to happen. So they will respect us. But having said that, we need to now also take care of a few more issues. And that is what we need to analyze. Okay. So let's get to that. What, what, what's that story all about? And yeah, let me get back to my slide and I'll take his comments off. Look, let's look at it this way. Uh, this was a chance for them to uh, reset their relationship. Okay, after all, they have met each other for a long time. It's not now. This the, must be the 10th, 12th time they're meeting after a break of five years. Before that, uh, right. Now, this is a chance for reset for India-China relations and uh, a PM equation with Xi Jinping. Both. Okay. Now, one thing which uh, we need to understand is the equation which was there before 2020 and the equation now has changed, you know, quite a bit. There's a sea change in India and China, whether it's in the diplomatic way, global tensions, what you're doing, what you're not doing. Right. Now, the significant thing is every time they have met, there's something has happened on the LSE. It's to do with the LSE, whether uh, a prime minister went to Wuhan in 2017, he came to Mahabalipuram. Uh, or when he came to, you know, uh, Ahmedabad, wo jula ke saath, jab ye ho tha, Depsang mein those chaps had got, come in, same Raki Nala, Jeevan Nala, this, which I showed. So, that overhang is there. Uh, will this entire process be transitory? We don't know. Because we can talk whatever we want. What's the behavior of people on, on ground? It's only two days. It's just an announcement. The disengagement has not taken place fully. We don't know the modalities of disengagement. I mean, forget the rest of the things. The modalities of the disengagement have to be still worked out. Now, there are a lot of questions in this. You know, when the disengagement happened on Pangong, so North Bank, they went back nine kilometers and that became a buffer zone. But whatever was in that buffer zone, all the infrastructure created by Chinese were taken out. Will a similar thing happen here or not? That's one just one question I'm asking. Then next thing, what will happen to these buffer zones which were created? Now, all these nitty gritties have to be worked out. So let's not raise our hopes. Let's do the basic. Like a baby has to take baby steps. That's why I said, uh, take small steps with no great expectation. Take baby steps and then see where the whole story goes. Till then, there's no question of talking with uh, China on, uh, you know, trade, shade and all this nonsense. Just keep them out. He's also said, both of them have said, let the special representatives meet. Now, let the special representatives meet on the border, on all other issues and talk. And then come out with something. So what they should talk, how they should talk, what all, uh, all that I can only comment when the fine print comes out. So far, that has not come out. Okay. But we need to realize there's a large trust deficit. We don't trust them completely. Neither will they trust us. I mean, let's put it. The Chinese don't trust anyone. They don't trust themselves. So that problem is there. Now, the important thing which I we need to understand in this entire construct which is happening is both India and China and Xi Jinping and Mr. Modi are at critical points of their respective histories. History. History will record from here 
whatever happens, history will record Mr. Modi or rather judge Mr. Modi based on that. Same with Xi Jinping. Xi Jinping could have done whatever he wanted in the past 10, 20 years. But what the outcome will be, you know, uh, in constant in the annals of China India relationship. I, to that extent, one needs to keep track of it. And my analysis, I'll keep giving you and I'll occasionally get people because I think there's a lot, long way to go. But one thing for sure, you can't go back to the, the days of pre-2020 or the Jula times. It's a new start. Um, and it cannot be business as usual. You have to go step by step. I only hope we have the patience to do that. And I think we will have the patience because if the government does anything wrong, let me be very candid about it. The internal politics will not let the government survive. I'm, I mean, I'm telling you, it's not a matter whether uh, uh, Mr. Modi is good, bad or ugly. That's not the issue. Internal politics of India will not let uh, any government survive if it goes against the wishes of the people. Who are the wishes of the people? It is you and I. So unless we articulate our wishes, how will it be heard? So the public is something they have to take along. Even Xi Jinping is at the same thing. I mean, let me be very clear on this. So that is something which we have to, that is why I say, please come join Opine. And I'm very sure, I, I, I by now I'm pretty sure that where the questions you chaps pose and I answer, someone is seeing it. Definitely. Okay. So, I mean, and if I, if people have understood by now, a lot of people would have understood that whatever I have analyzed so far has come right in, in terms of China, people will say so. And I, in fact, in the afternoon, I gave a talk with News 9, with Sandeep Punitan. That's what he told. He said, sir, for three years back, I remember telling you, I'll put that clip out. It'll come out by tonight, maybe by tomorrow, day after, I'll put that out. You'll understand what I'm talking. And you'll understand when a, when a person of a high reputation like Sandeep Punitan is going to talk about me, then you people will understand why you should come to Gunner Shot for these. Other things you go anywhere. I can't talk about BJP, CJP and all that nonsense. Okay. Now, when we deal with this whole story, what do we have to do? You need to ensure transparency in the dealing. You see, what happened in 2020? In 2020, the transparency was not there as to how we dealt with China. Okay. And there was no trust, internal trust in the polity. So that we have to be clear. And whatever the government does, it should keep the, I mean, first it should know, tell everyone what is the deal. Keep the parliament and the public in loop. That's what I said earlier also. Tell the parliament, get the views of the opposition. Then the government will be in problems. Okay, the next thing which is very important. See, you can have an agreement today with China or anyone. But with say, especially with the China is on the LAC. But agreements tend to degenerate over a time. And be prepared for the breakdown. After all, we had agreements with China from 2003. You can have all kinds of agreements. Uh, you know, on paper at the highest level. But what happens on ground will be dictated by like Natta Singh on ground. That soldier on ground, how he behaves that day. Or that ping ting from the other side. So, if you have strong setups, then we will uh, not go away. But if you don't have strong structures put in, then any mishap at the LAC 
will lead to a breakdown. And to my understanding, a large part of this breakdown happened because of this uh, degeneration. Okay. And that will happen. It, it's bound to happen with time. Abhi nahi to do saal, do saal nahi to three saal. That is why I had said, when will war happen with China? Not immediately. Abhi to everyone will say, no war, no war, no war. Two years, three years down the line, China will seek an opportunity and then come. They will deliberately degenerate the situation at that point of time based on some incident. We don't know. Okay. The next thing is, okay, you achieved this. You restored the LAC back, everything. Is there a case for us to start the boundary settlement? Delimitation of the boundary, which is important. Start talking of that. Like yesterday, I showed four steps. Ultimately, we have to take a so we have to start that. Then this economic advisor, he should be sacked uh, as far as I'm concerned. He shouldn't have spoken about allowing FDI in. The moment that has happened, this Chinese ambassador here has gone on overdrive. And he, there's a lot of reactions from all over the countryside. Why? Because they felt that the government here was divided. I spoke of this in an episode. Is the government divided? The foreign minister speaks something, your finance minister speaks something. Are there two groups? That nonsense should stop completely and nothing like sacking one bureaucrat. Now, the next important thing which we need to guard against at this point of time is you allow any dealing with China, it, you know, this games of information, public opinion, propaganda will start. They'll make their outreach slowly to uh, these communist people in India. They'll start their three war strategy, salami slicing, dumping of items. Already they're dumping steel into India through Vietnam. All this will recommence if you don't take care of it. And that like I said, like the border negotiations will degenerate. These today, everyone, what we talk will also degenerate. Maybe a, one year down the line, we'll say, yeah, ye kya ho hai? government kuch nahi kar That's the talk we'll have. Okay. Then you have to realize this is something someone else, I, I picked it up today in social media. If democratic India succeeds, it's a failure of autocratic China. Then people will start questioning internally. And this is your biggest weapon. You need to use it. You know, people say, how do you get through the firewall of China? You can get through the firewall of China. Get through VPN. There are a lot of people in of Chinese origin who are sitting in, or from China who are sitting outside. Businessmen, everyone. Give them. They'll go back and tell. So we have to start thinking differently to take this relationship forward. Security. You have to focus on security. You don't have a choice. Right? So this is what I thought I'll talk about uh, this relationship, China, India, this little, uh, uh, you know, breakthrough we've had. And we'll take it forward as we go along. After all, we're going to have more. And like someone said, uh, I couldn't do Tibet today. Uh, Tibet, I'll do tomorrow. Let me see how it goes. Then the next question which we have to really consider. Are the PLA and the CCP on the same page? The history of China is that there has been always trouble when the PLA and CCP are not been on the same page. And they have not been on the same page for many times. Okay. And I think when Xi Jinping took over uh, as the president, he and the PLA were not on the same page. And that's why some incidents happened which he didn't probably have control over. 
Today he has control over all of them. But there are indications that there is a faction within PLA led by the vice chairman Zhang Yuxia who is manipulating things from behind. There is also a political jitteriness about Xi Jinping, which we have spoken about. So if the PLA and the CCP are not on the same page, expect trouble at the border. Very important. We must understand.